Welcome to the last section of Chapter 5, Section 5.5. Here we're going to be looking at something called the Fibonacci sequence and looking at some cool properties that this sequence has. So let me start out by defining the Fibonacci sequence. Oh, I think there's just one end. Let me correct that. The Fibonacci sequence. So the Fibonacci sequence is um, something that was observed in nature, right? And the, kind of the historic problem is mentioned at the very beginning of this section in the book where you put a pair of rabbits in a cage and during the first month they don't produce an offspring, but the next month they do and they produce one new pair of rabbits each successive offspring where each new pair is producing um, new offspring in the same manner. They miss the first month, but then they pick up the second month. And when you look at the um, at the um, pairs of rabbits that they'll be at the end of one year. Um, that kind of was the historic problem that was there. And the numbers that are generated is, remember in the first month we have one pair of rabbits, second month one pair, and then in the third month we'll have two pairs. And then um, those two pairs won't have rabbits, but the original two will ha have another one, and so or the original pair will have another one so it's a three and then five eight thirteen and so this Fibonacci sequence really is defined like this for the first Fibonacci number which will denote f sub one it's one for the second one it's also one but for the third one it's the first one plus the second one for the um, fourth one it's the second one plus the third one right for the nth one it is the one that's two behind plus the one that's one behind. So for example, if we go back up here and stop thinking about rabbits, one and one are defined to be the first two. Then one plus one is two, two plus one is three, three plus two is five, five plus three is eight, eight plus five is 13, eight plus 13, 21, 21 plus uh, 13, is 34. 34 plus 21 is 55. 55 plus 34 is 89. 89 plus 55 is 144. 144 plus 89 is 233. 233 and 144 is 377. 377 and 233 is 610. And it just goes on for as ever long as we want. This is the Fibonacci sequence. And it's interesting because it's observed in nature. As you read the book, you'll recognize that it's in the patterns of a sunflower, a pineapple, and also even in a, a shell of a, of a sea animal called a nautilus, right? It's very interesting that these numbers come up, or the sequence of numbers comes up in a repeatable pattern. And so they're just pointing out some of the great things that are there um, and, and that we can do with the Fibonacci sequence. But a lot of this is going to be pattern recognition and um, extrapolation, for lack of a better word. Hey, okay, what do I see in this pattern? What can I then predict or conclude? And so we'll look at that. We'll look at some homework questions together. So the other thing that's mentioned in here as you go through the homework is something called the golden ratio. So the golden ratio was used and found by Greek mathematicians and they really loved it. You can see it in Greek architecture as well as artwork. They really respected the golden ratio because they felt it was the most pleasing to the eye. And so let's, let me tell you what that golden ratio number is. The exact value of it without any round off is 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 2. That is the exact value of the golden ratio. From a decimal approximation point of view, it is 1.618034. And it goes on forever with no repeatable pattern because of that square root of 5. But that's the golden ratio. So what's the connection here? Well, they found that if you took two uh, successive Fibonacci numbers, so Fn over Fn minus 1, it got really, really close to the golden ratio, especially as you pick bigger and bigger terms. So it's pretty much dead on the golden ratio for large values of n. 
So what I mean by large values in, I mean farther out in that succession. So a lot of the problems are going to rely on the Fibonacci sequence. So I'm going to recommend that you keep this Fibonacci sequence close to you as you go through the homework. Write it down, have it on a sheet of paper next to you, because you'll refer to it a lot. So um, let me just take two of those numbers. Let me take 34 and 21. So two successive ones, 34 and 21. If I look at 34 and divide it by 21, look what number works out. 1.619048 super close to the golden ratio but not exact what we're claiming is as we go out and get larger pairs let's grab these two 610 divided by 377 that we get almost dead on and at some point are dead on let's see how close we are here 1.618037 well, that's pretty close, right? It's a 3-4, and I got a 3-7 all, uh, all of a sudden. So as we go out and grab ones farther down, it comes to this golden ratio. Just an interesting consequence. So let me take a moment to rewrite the Fibonacci sequence. That way it's not way up there. So I'm just translating this again. 1-1, one, one, 2-3... Five, eight, thirteen, twenty one, thirty four, fifty five, eighty nine, one forty four, two thirty three, three seventy seven, and I'll throw in the six ten. It should be as far as you need. They're going to have us look at patterns. So the first homework question that I want to address is dealing with patterns. Most of them are like that. Um, and let me get the wording on it. This is what most of the wording looks like. The following pattern is established using terms of the Fibonacci sequence. make a conjecture right a conjecture meaning a, an educated guess concerning the next equation in the pattern and I'll show you exactly how they're gonna want you to answer that So this would be the same direction for an example number two and everything else that we do. So here's the pattern that they have in this first homework example. One equals one. One plus two equals three. One plus two plus five equals eight. One plus two plus five plus 13 equals 21. One plus two plus five plus 13 plus 34 is equal to 55. And so the first question it asks is for each equation, it says this, each equation skips the next Fibonacci number. I'll do Fib number if that's okay with you to add the one after. So it gives you this direction, it kind of tells you about the pattern. Each side of the next equation will equal, and then there's a box for you to put that answer in, right? That's what the homework is going to look like. So let's take a look at just the answers that are on the right hand side. It goes 1, 3, 8, 21, 55. Let's find that. 1, 3, 8, 21, 55. So what's the next answer got to be? It has to be 144. So 144 is going to be what the right-hand side and the left-hand side equal. And we'll drop that and we'll say, good job. So then what's the equation of the next one? 
Well, let's look. So then they'll say, what is the equation of the next one? And so, well, we know it's going to be 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 13 plus 34 plus. So let's go find those numbers. 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 13 plus 34. So what are we going to add next? We're going to add that 89. Plus 89 is equal to 144. And when you type that in, it's going to tell you, hey, great job. Right? So what it has is two boxes, one on each side of the equal sign, and you're just filling them in. That's the way it's going to look for a lot of the homework. So we'll really rely upon this Fibonacci sequence. Let me give you another example. I'm going to erase some of these marks that are up here. Maybe just use different highlighters as we can. So again, it's going to start out with the following pattern is established using terms of the Fibonacci sequence. Identify the next one in the pattern. And so let me erase all of this so that we can stay close to our Fibonacci numbers. So you can always back the video up and see the, the work that's there. So let's go look at this next pattern. So I'm actually going to get rid of this wording too because we know that's all the same. So they're just going to mention that the pattern's using Fibonacci numbers. They all will be. Um, they do bring up another pattern at the end that's related to the Fibonacci, very, very similar, called the Lucas sequence. And we'll take a look at that before uh, we end this video. So here's the Fibonacci numbers, and here's the pattern. So they have 1 is equal to 2 minus 1. 1 plus 1 is equal to 3 minus 1. 1 plus 1 plus 2 is equal to 5 minus 1. 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 8 minus 1. And these are all true statements. It's so amazing, right? And then they end with this one. 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 is equal to 13 minus 1. And so the questions are really the same. Um, so they have each side of the next equation will equal okay and they want a number there okay and so we need to figure out what that number is so let's take a look at the right hand side we got 2 minus 1 3 minus 1 5 minus 1 8 minus 1 13 minus 1 let me come in here with an a uh, highlighter 2, 3, 5, 8 minus 1, 13 minus 1. So the next one has to be, let me highlight that in maybe blue. The next one has to be this 21. It's got to involve the 21. So we're going to figure out 21 minus 1, right? So the next one is definitely going to be, let me put it in blue, 21 minus 1. Well, we know what 21 minus 1 is. That's 20. And we'll put that into the box, and it will click check answer, and it will say we're great. And then it will say write the next equation. In the pattern. So we already got the right hand side in terms of the equation. Let's go get the left hand side. Well, obviously it's going to have 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5. What's going to be the next one? Let's go find those. So let me come in here and erase these highlights that were used for the right-hand side. And let's look for the 11235. And we'll highlight that in yellow. 11235. Oh, so the next one's got to be an 8. And so we'll put an 8 in there. And we have it. We drop that in and we get a nice um, green check mark that we've done everything well. Okay. Awesome. That's what we're looking for, these pattern types of things. And, and they're, they're a lot. Um, there's a lot of different examples that are in there, um, but you'll just be looking for those patterns. And that's why I'm recommending having that Fibonacci sequence right there. 
something that's interesting is um, what they bring up in the homework. And they probably bring it up in the book as well, um, but just have you work with it in the homework. And so here's the next problem I'd like you to look at. So I'll call it the third problem. Every natural number, so a natural number is a counting number, so it's not negative and it's not a fraction or anything like that. Every natural number can be expressed as a sum of Fibonacci numbers. So notice what they said. They didn't say two Fibonacci numbers. They're just saying, hey, you know what? Everyone can be written as a sum of Fibonacci numbers, which seems incredible. Um, but they're not limiting it to two. So the question that they ask in the homework looks like this, and they'll just pick a natural number. Finish the sum. So they have 150 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 8 plus box. And they don't give us any direction other than that. But that's a lot of direction. It's kind of nice that they started us out somewhere. Notice 1, 2, 3, and 8 are all Fibonacci numbers. You can see that up at the top. And these are going to be our only choices. It's not realistic to think that they've left out just one number. In fact, I don't think that they have. But let's check. Let's look at um, how far we're off. And so I'll put that number in parentheses. So if I took 150 and subtracted away 1, subtract away 2, subtract away 3, and subtract away 8, or subtract away 14, if you see that that sums 14. 150 minus 14 means we're 136 shy right now. As I look up to this list of numbers, I don't see a 136, so it's not just a one and done type of thing. So that's great. I'm glad they did that. So obviously we wouldn't choose anything above 136. So let me just, for lack of a better reason, let's see if we start with 89. Like if I choose 89, so I'll put my choices in blue. What does that do? What does that leave me with? Well, if I subtract 89 from 136, I get 47. So I'm looking up here for 47, and 47 isn't um, a Fibonacci number. So one question is, is could we take one or two Fibonacci numbers and come up with 47? Do you see any that would add to 47? And I think I see a pair. Take a look at the pair. I'll put it in blue here, 13 and 34. 13 and 34 add up to be 47. So 13, 34, and 89 are a guy. So in this box, we would drop in 89 plus 13 plus 34. You should be able to put it in any order, but if you find that it's marked you wrong and you know that that's right, try putting it as 13 first, 34 second, and 89 last. Um, see how sensitive that machine is. Obviously, I would see something like that on the exam and come back and correct it. Okay, so... As you get towards the end of the pro homework problems, they are going to bring up a set of questions that relate to the Lucas sequence that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so I'm going to erase this so that I can keep my Fibonacci sequence close to this because they're going to relate the two. And I'll show you the first 10 terms of the Lucas uh, sequence. Okay, so there's the Fibonacci sequence. We'll go do the Lucas sequence in red. So it's the same premise, except Lucas starts out with two different numbers. He starts out with the first odd numbers, one and three. And then he does the same thing, he adds them. So four, seven, eleven. 11 plus 7 is 18, 18 plus 11 is 29, 29 plus 18 is 47, 47 and 29 is 76, 76 and 147 is 123, right? And so they may ask you, hey, you know, these are the first 10 terms, right? Yeah, I just count them out. Those are the first 10 terms. And so they might ask you to... Um, Find the 11th term, no problem. You're just adding 76 and 123. I think that's actually your first exposure to the Lucas sequence is a question like that. 
But then they have a question that at the end that says something like this. Um, the, it's a pattern. So they would say, actually it says this. Let me put it in black. Many, interesting, patterns exist involving the Fibonacci and Lucas sequences. So here's one. So it's very similar to the other ones that we had, except now we're going to be thinking about Lucas series as well. So here's the one that they give us. 1 plus 2 equals 3. 1 plus 3 equals 4. 2 plus 5 equals 7. 3 plus 8 equals 11. 5 plus 13 equals 18. And so questions are the same. Question A is each expression on the next equation in the list is equal to and then blank on both sides. Okay, so that's the way they have it written out. So take a look at the pattern that's on the right hand side. 3, 4, 7, 11, 18. Do you see that pattern up above? Sure you do. It's in the Lucas sequence. So we know the very next number needs to be the next number in the Lucas sequence or 29. So both sides would be equal to 29 and we drop that in and get credit for that part of the question. Then you know what B is going to say. Write the next equation. And it's going to have blank plus blank equals blank, right? And so what we know what to do there, let's take a look at the numbers on the left hand side. We already have the right hand side. We know that the right hand side is 29. But what about the left-hand side? 3 plus 8 equals 11. 5 plus 13. Okay, so let's look at this 2 and 5. 2 and 5. That was followed up by then 3 and 8. Which, so what would be next? Next would be, well, we see what's next. 5, and I'll put that, I'll highlight that this time. 5 and 13. So the next one's got to be 8 and 21. And so, therefore, we get the 8 plus 21 in there. And it does work out to be 29, so we get, we're doubly sure about that. But look what was happening, 2 and 5. Then, then 3 and 8, right, between them, right? Then back to 5 and 13, so we'll be back to 8 and 21, always skipping one. And so we put the 8 in, the 21 in, and we'll get full credit. So this is what the homework looks like in 5.5, pretty nice. So hopefully it goes really well for you.